Hello students, welcome to Year 11 Chemistry and the Reactive Chemistry module. This is video number three in this particular series and we're going to just um, continue that idea of using models to help us understand chemical reactions. So one of the key points that we talked about in the last video is the fact that when we use models we can actually use those models to help us understand the idea of conservation of atoms during a chemical reaction. So here is one particular example. Carbon solid reacting with oxygen gas can form carbon monoxide. Now, of course, this is just one particular combination of carbon and oxygen, but it does provide us with a way of identifying how our modeling can help us to identify conservation and also the rearrangement of atoms during chemical reactions. But there's one more thing that it can do as well. And we'll have a look at that a little bit more as we go through this video. When we look at carbon, carbon exists in a couple of allotropic forms. Um, and it's most likely that if we were going to carry out an experiment like this, we would be using the um, graphite form of carbon, not the diamond form. That makes it a very expensive experiment um, in order to combine with oxygen to form carbon monoxide. Now, you'll notice that these two molecules over here that are part of our products are a carbon bonded to an oxygen. Here, the carbons are bonded to one another with covalent bonds. And likewise, here would be a double bond existing between the two oxygen uh, atoms in order to form the O2 molecule. These sorts of bonds must be broken in order for a reactant to become a product. And of course, new bonds must also form. And we can use that again using our molymod kits. We can demonstrate um, this sort of an idea with molymods. Now, the most important thing to remember, and if this, uh, this second example that I'm going to look at involves the combustion of methane CH4, which is this particular molecule here, a tetrahedral molecule with a central carbon atom bonded to four hydrogen atoms in a tetrahedral structure. When this particular uh, molecule combines with oxygen, there can be a number of products. And we'll explore the different kinds of products that we can get um, a little bit in uh, future videos. Um, but one of the products that we can get when methane is combusted in the presence of oxygen is this. This is carbon dioxide, one carbon, two oxygens. Now you can see that there's a few changes that have to be undertaken in order for, to, from, to us, in order for us to get from the reactants to the products. And of course, um, the first thing that you should notice is that if I've started with this and this, then this can't be the only product. The key here, of course, is that there are hydrogens involved in um, the construction of methane and carbon dioxide has no hydrogens. So one of the things that you want to start trying to do is seeing if you can predict the sorts of products that are likely to be formed based on um, any information that you are given or already do know. Now, the answers are not always going to be obvious because there may be more than one. But at least it's worth starting this process of helping you in, with your balancing of equations when you identify that, OK, if we've got carbon and hydrogen in this particular molecule, we're combining it with oxygen, then carbon dioxide can't be our only product. In fact, the other product is water. So water molecules are also formed. They use that oxygen and take up the hydrogens. And so therefore, we can now start putting the whole thing together to get a sense of exactly what's going on here. Remember, the two key points are that we need to make sure that we conserve our atoms. We conserve the total number of atoms. So when I write down that one of the products of this equation is carbon dioxide, I'm aware of the fact that I haven't done anything with the hydrogens yet. 
when I add water, and at the temperature that this is likely to occur at, that water is likely to be a gas, um, then I now have a way of taking that into account. Bonds are being broken here. So in order for this reaction to occur, a bond must be broken between the carbon and the hydrogen. In fact, between the carbon and all four of these hydrogens, bonds must break. Those bonds must also break between the, the uh, oxygen molecules. So we have to break these bonds as well. Energy must be put in in order to break those bonds. But then we're going to form new bonds. So we've gone from an oxygen-oxygen double bond, we're now going to an oxygen-hydrogen single bond. As this process occurs, we end up with two new products. But we also need to make sure that our atoms are conserved. So we start with one methane, we need two oxygen molecules to give us one carbon dioxide, but two water molecules. That means I can write the equation as CH4 plus 2O2 gives CO2 plus 2H2O. Again, if you go through and look at each of these car, uh, atoms or elements individually, I have one atom of carbon. For hydrogen, I have four. And here I have two times two, which is four. And then for um, oxygen, I have two times two, which is four. And I have two here and here two times one which is two and two plus two is four so once again my equation is balanced these sorts of modeling are useful to play with just to give you a sense of how different atoms can be reorganized recombined in order to form products have a good play with them in class and we'll look at a number of different types of uh, chemical reactions in order to describe these in more specific detail. Thanks for watching.